any of you have been to talks where the speaker starts with their rags to riches story? They, they, it's always a rags to riches story. I don't have that story. I was born rich. <laughs> Seriously, very rich. When you're born rich, you don't know you're born rich because that's just your life. But there's usually people who are richer than you are. So whether you're born poor and look at the rich or you're born rich and look at the richer, you're always looking for something more. But I was a very, very, very blessed child. I had everything I wanted. Uh, the chauffeur would pick me up to take me to my riding lessons. I went to private school, I went to private camp, I traveled in Europe. I mean, I was an extraordinary blessed child. And then I went to college, and my mother told me that I couldn't date the boy I was dating, so I married him. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you do, right? And then, because he went back to school and I didn't, I supported him. So I had to figure out what to do to support him, and my mother was the nation's foremost fitness authority, and I knew how to teach exercise, so I opened an exercise school in New York City. And then I became famous. So now I'm rich and famous. <laughs> and I had my own television show on NBC, and I was a reporter for the Today Show, and I was a big deal. And I have 11 books on fitness, and I have a New York Times best-selling book before the internet. That was a big deal, by the way. Because that meant you actually had to tell people, tell them, not type them, tell them. And then they had to go into the bookstore to buy the books. And that was very exciting. And then I divorced my husband, and then I sold my school, and then I discovered the mind. That's a bigger playground. And my title is You Are the Power, and you are the power. You can do anything. So I started off rich, and it took me 47 years to become poor. And I did it brilliantly. I made every <laughs> single mistake you can make. Having been famous, I was a little bit arrogant and quite insufferable. So eight months after I did the Oprah show, I ended up homeless. That's scary. So what happens when you're homeless? Well, first of all, you're scared out of your mind, but then you have to make the best of it. Now, I wasn't, didn't live on the street, and I didn't live in my car. The second night out, so to speak, with my stuff in storage and me in my car, was the La Jolla Hyatt. All expenses paid because I was a famous person. I just happened to be broke and homeless. So here I am at the La Jolla Hyatt because I'm speaking there the next day. And then I stayed at the La Jolla Hyatt for two days, and then I was off to Rancho La Puerta, a five-star spa in Tecate, Mexico, because I was speaking there, because I'm a famous person, I just happened to be broken homeless. <laughs> and I spent eight to 10 months, I can't remember exactly how long it was, doing that, creating an opportunity. I would drive into Rancho La Puerta, for example, on Saturday morning, because I was gonna be speaking there all week, but I didn't know where I was going Saturday, the following Saturday. And I would have to make it up between Saturday to Saturday to make sure I had a place to live the following week. I did that for 10 months and I ended up in Hawaii for six weeks, two weeks at one time and six weeks at another time. I wrote my book, You Are, uh, Change Your Mind, Change Your Body, living in a friend's apartment in New York City. Meanwhile, I had no money and I was homeless. But there I am living in New York and somebody's home. So, you can, you can create all kinds of things. So the reason I'm telling you this is that I went from very rich to totally broke, and now I'm becoming rich again. <laughs> and it's all up here. It's all up here. Everything you think you can create. And that's a very important statement. Because if you think it and you create it, what are you thinking? I decided, okay, so what do you want in 2015? Well, I'd like to do a TED Talk. This was a week and a half ago. I'd like to do a TED Talk. Now, this last Saturday, I happened to go into my office. We were closed. I went to my office, and I checked my email, and there's an email from somebody who says, 
I got an offer for a TED Talk I can't do. I'm leaving for Italy on Saturday. Do you want it? Now, I had this New Year's desire on December 31st. It's now January 3rd. I said, yes. <laughs> so we got all the you know, back and forths, and here I am. So what do you want? Because you can create whatever you want. I believe, I, I truly believe, that I created this with my desire and my intention and my knowing that I could do it. And all I had to do was say, that's what I want. You have the power to create absolutely anything you want in your life. Anything. From living in grandeur while being homeless, going from being rich to being poor to being rich again, creating any kind of business. I just created a company over the holidays, a publishing company. Why? Because I want to do it. I signed my first author two days ago. So everything you think, what do you want? Because if you want it and you think it, you can have it. It doesn't come immediately and it doesn't come necessarily without work. And it isn't like the secret where you think it and it shows up. You think it and then you work for it. You take action, you do, and you create. Now, there's some things that have happened to me along the way which don't happen to a lot of people because they don't know that they can do it. But because I know I can do it, they happen to me. When I had my, uh, my company, Positive Changes, which was a, a hypnosis company that specialized in weight loss, I had four offices in Los Angeles. And we specialized in weight loss, and I had to come up with forty to $50,000 a month to break even. That's a lot of money for a hypnotherapist. So I was a little bit stressed one time because we didn't have it. So I had a conversation with God and I said, I need between thirty and fifty thousand dollars this week. You've helped me create miracles before. I need this miracle. And I let it go. The next morning, not at four, <laughs> At 8 o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call from my alarm company. Ms. Pruden, we have to get into your office. There's a flood, and the fire department's going to have to knock down the door unless you get somebody there. Now, I was going to my office in West LA. I called my sister. She went to Beverly Hills. She opens the door. She looks inside. She turns around, walks away and then remembers that she's the vice president of the company and has to handle it. The ceiling was coming down, the walls were coming in, the floor was <laughs> We had a problem. And um, the day before, I had been in there saying, oh, we need new cor carpets, but it's not in the budget. We need new paint, but it's not in the budget. I need to move all the computers into the back room, but it's not in the budget. Well, guess what happened? We were closed for three weeks. The carpets were replaced, the walls were painted and replaced, the computers were all moved. And the insurance company sent me $40,000. It gets better. Now I have a company, and I'm in El Segundo. It's a tiny company, and I love it. I do most of the work on the phone. And so I have clients from all over the world. And we had a, this was three years ago, we had a very bad month. So I had a conversation with God. I said, God, we're on the second floor. There's nobody above us. I don't want a fire. I need a flood. But we can't have a flood because we're on the second floor. There's nobody above us. How can we have a flood? So but whatever you can do, I'd appreciate it. And then I let it go. Three days later, I got a phone call. There's been a flood in your office. <laughs> right. What happened was that the kitchen pipes burst. And the only cabinet in my, off, in my kitchen, in my office, there's nothing upstairs with the top floor, the only cabinet that was flooded was the cabinet where I had all of my product for sale. And so the insurance company wrote me a check for $8,000. So I was, again, it's like, thank you. <laughs> I'm afraid to say, you know, I need some help. I'm a, <laughs> maybe, maybe a flood somewhere. But <laughs> it, 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 it happens. So what do you want? What do you ask for? It's, all you've got to do is ask. You can create anything you want. 
anything you want. <coughs> I wanted to change my business from what I'm doing to something else. So over the holidays, my sister and I created a publishing company. We signed our first author two days ago. So you can create whatever you want. Now, my journey from homeless back to being a high paid speaker and having companies that bring me hundreds of thousands of dollars a year was not easy. But I did it. And so can you. It's like, okay, what do you want? And then what do I have to do? And every morning when I used to get up on my journey back, I'd say, what do I have to do today? What do I have to do today? And then I would do it. So it's very, very important to remember that what you focus on is what you create. And I'm going to illustrate that with a story. When I was working on my book, Meta Fitness, which is the book that got me on the Oprah show, I was working on it, and it was 1988. So we, yes, we had computers. <laughs> but we didn't have internet. And I was living in California. My sister was living in New York City. And we were working on the telephone, we write together, on the computers. So I had headsets on. And so we're working on the computer, so the headset with the mic, and there's no internet, we'd be writing, and I'd have an idea, she'd have an idea, and we'd keep writing back and forth. And then one of us would say, stop. Okay. And the other one would stop, because I have an idea, whoever that was, and that person would start writing well, usually it was my sister, and then I'd have nothing to do. Because she's writing and I'm waiting. So I'd start writing. And then she'd say, I'm done. I said, I'm not done yet. And then she'd say, I'd say, okay, now I'm done. Read me what you've got. She'd read me what she had written in that time. I'd read her what I'd written at that time, and they fit. I don't know how that worked. But it works. We still write books together. So I started complaining. How many of you have ever complained about or listened to a complaint about a body part? You know? You're not satisfied with a body part. Okay, yeah, I used to have an adversarial relationship with my rear end. <laughs> so I'm talking to my sister about my rear end. And I am saying to her, I can't stand my rear end. I'm getting fat. I'm gaining weight. I can't wear my clothes. My pants don't fit. I feel like I should back out of rooms. I, I should just take the food and rub it on my thighs because that's where it's going to go anyway. <laughs> anyway, so how many of you had that thought? Or another body part? So now it's in, in the voice of God. And I knew it was the voice of God because I had the headphones on. <laughs> she said, she said, Susie. <laughs> what? <laughs> what you focus on expands. Oh my God! <laughs> because in that moment I could literally feel my rear end going <laughs> like expanding. And I tell you that because for me in that moment, it was visceral. I could actually experience the thought. So when every single thought you have has a physiological response, both outwardly and inwardly, we don't end here. We send and we receive. Every thought you have is sent. Every thought that all of you have, I am receiving right now. It, it, it happens. Ever, ever walk into a room and all of a sudden you go, oh, and you get the, that whole part of you goes, oh, I don't want to be here. <laughs> and you sense something going, oh, I don't want to be here. <laughs> and you know, I don't want to be here, but you stay. <laughs> and all of a sudden something happens and then you say, yourself says, told you you didn't want to be here. <laughs> but, so you got to pay attention to your thoughts, to your feelings, to your whole system and realize that the power is in your mind. Everything you see around you was a thought first. And every single one of you gets to be right about everything you think. So my question all the time is, what do you want to be right about? And that's a very important question. So ask yourself right now, what do I want to be right about? And realize that whatever you're thinking, you're going to get to be right about. And notice as you move through each day your thoughts and realize that you're going to get to be right about everything you're thinking. Think to yourself, how do you want your day to be? And that's the thought you think. 
Today is a wonderful day. Today is a happy day. Today is a prosperous day. Today I pass all my exams. Today I get the job I want. Today I create the company I want, whatever it is. You think it, you'll get it, and yes, you do have to take action. So what do you want this year? What do you want this year? And for those of you who are willing to do this exercise, close your eyes. So with your eyes closed, take a deep, deep breath and hold it. And then exhale. And with the exhalation, allow yourself to begin to relax. And when you're ready, take another deep, deep breath and hold it again. And then exhale again. And imagine yourself releasing all of the old stuff, all of your beliefs of not being good enough, all of your fears, all of your what ifs, all of the I don't know if I can do this. Just let them all go. You don't have to know how. Your mind knows how. Just let them all go. And now, create in your mind a canvas. And on this canvas, allow your mind to paint, or to picture, or to describe for you in the way that you receive information what it is that you want in this next year. Whether you're in school, whether it's a job, whether it's a new business, whether it's a recital, no matter what it is, whether it's an adventure, picture it. Imagine it, feel it, see it, hear it, smell it, taste it. It's right there in front of you. And now step into the canvas, stepping into your next year. And realize as you step into this canvas, you are stepping into your next year, and your mind is creating it, and you will now achieve it. And when you know that this is true, open your eyes awake and aware and fully present. And know that this is so. Every thought you have has a physiological response. There is no picture in the mind for you, he, she, it, they, or we. The mind only hears I. And so when you hear a positive statement, you hear it as a positive statement about yourself. When you hear a negative statement, you hear it as a negative statement about yourself. When you say a positive statement, yourself takes it as a positive statement about you. When you say a negative statement, yourself takes it as a negative statement about you. Be very careful what you say. Be very careful what you think. You have the power to create whatever you want. Be mindful of your thoughts. Be mindful of how you step out in the world. And remember, you can create it the way you want it. Just think it. Take action and achieve it, and thank you.